Hello, in this video we'd like to find out how far away that pole is from me or you. Well, in this image it's represented by Horace. Um, and we're, we're trying to figure out how far away that pole is, but in this instance we can't step it off. We can't measure it using any kind of formal or, uh, a part, pardon me, an ad, like a tape measure or a laser or something. We've got to infer or deduce the distance. And we can do that using something called the parallax method. It's actually called trigonometric parallax. And it's one of those concepts that doesn't make any sense until you actually do it. But essentially, I'm going to step a little bit to the right from where I'm currently standing. And then I'm going to take uh, an angle measurement. I'm going to take an angle measurement from where I'm, I'm standing in the beginning. And then take another angle measurement from where I move to when I step to the right. Then I'm going to measure the distance between where I was first standing and where I moved to, and that, that distance becomes sort of the known quantity, so to, so to speak, that I can build my whole model on. We're really not going to be using anything more than uh, sine equation, uh, sine functions here, just finding the, 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 the lengths of sides based on an angle. It's not very hard. And when I show it to you on paper, it'll become clear. Now, in the field, this is what I do. Um, it's hard to see from the angle I'm taking this photo from, but this other light pole over here uh, on the sort of the right side of the image, the one that's that's bigger, sort of the, the light pole to the right of the light pole I'm trying to find the distance to, we're going to call that my reference light pole. So this is what the this is what the parallax scenario looks like. So now I've moved to the right, and I'm, I'm referencing that reference pole, which I was standing directly in front of when I uh, took my initial sighting of the unknown pole. And that's, that's how I was able to compute this. And I was able to compute it using this instrument. Let me show you the instrument I'm using. Uh, this is a slight modification of the instrument that we built in the other trigonometry uh, basic surveying problem. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see this thing. Okay, so uh, this is something you hold up to your eyes. Okay, I see that. Uh, let me put a point here on the paper as an example. So if I'm doing parallax calculations, I'm going to look through the uh, straw until I see the dot through the straw. And if I'm over here, okay, well, if I'm over here, I need to turn my, I'll need to turn my straw so I can see the dot through the straw again. Okay, and you can see if I can do that again. Yeah, so you're constantly looking for the dot through the straw, and you're, you're holding this instrument up to your eye line. Okay, and moving it around. Now straight ahead is 90 degrees. See? So then I'm, I'm always going to be moving to the left of 90 or to the right of 90 as it may be. In this problem, we're always going to be turning the knob or the straw to the left of 90. So I'll keep, I need to keep subtracting 90 from my measurements because, you know, here I'm getting 120. So I need to subtract 90 from that to actually get this angle that I'm forming. So enough of this instrument. It's just a slight modification of the other one that I built. In fact, I, I used the same design, the body of it. I basically just added a protractor. This was our original survey tool right here. Okay, so there's our original survey tool. I pulled the straw off that and put it here so I could take these, these measurements here. So we have now an instrument that can measure in, in, on multiple planes. Uh, enough of that. That's the instrument. Let me zoom back in. And go back to our parallax overlay. Okay. So I'm going to try to find 
using my I'm going to create a diagram of what, what you're seeing right now. I'm going to create it in, on a piece of paper. And you'll see that we can use simple uh, right angle triangle assign functions to find all the missing angles and the uh, missing side lengths. So let's transition back to our empty page and get started. So I'm now going to construct this diagram. All right, so let's start with uh, the pole that I don't know the distance to. All right, so we'll call this the unknown pole. We'll call this the unknown. Unknown. Now, I'm standing over here, okay? I'm standing right here. So this is my, my first viewing location, all right? We'll, call, we'll represent this with an I. Okay, that's, my, that's viewing location number one. Now, we need to put in some angles or some imp my, I'm standing in the image that I showed you before. I'm standing, I'm standing directly in front of another light pole. Okay, my camera distorts where I'm standing, but I'm standing in front of this, which we're going to call the reference pole. And I'll flash back to that image so you can see. So I'm standing directly in front of this. So I'm actually forming a right angle triangle, if you can see that. Let me draw this in a little bit more. And then this distance right here, this distance is the distance I want to know. I want to know this distance right here. <laughs> okay, that's what I want to know. So the question is, what is that? That's my ultimate goal to get to that number. But I have uh, a reference light pole, right? And that forms a 90 degree angle. So I can find using my instrument, this instrument right here, right? What I can do is I can turn this, if I'm, if I'm looking at the reference light pole at 90 degrees, Okay, I can then turn the protractor and sight the unknown light pole from the reference light pole like that and then find that angle, right? And that's exactly what I did in the field. So just for before we start writing things down, uh, let me uh, show you that again. So there is the reference light pole. Now, the first sighting location, I'm standing directly in front of that reference light pole. See if I, if I flash back to my image now, you can kind of see this is that first Horus dude, and I'm standing directly in front of the reference light pole. Here's a, um, a simplified image that, that I took the background out of it that might help you. Okay, so let me get rid of that and zoom in on my uh, drawing a little bit. And we can compute this fairly easily. All right. I want you to be able to see all this. All right. So there are some other implied angles here. This is here. Creating kind of a rectangle. Okay. So what was this, this angle right here? We're going to call this guy angle A. All right. Now here's I actually went out into the field 
and using that instrument, I found angle A. Now my protractor gives it off in, in too many degrees, so here's how I found angle A. Angle A was equal to uh, 119.5 degrees, okay, minus 90 degrees. Okay, because I, I was, my protractor was pointed at 90 degrees. And so that equals 29.5 degrees. That's angle A. Now, what did I do next? Well, I stepped over a few steps. To about right there. Well, this isn't a scale, of course, but I stepped over a few steps. Keep that in mind, this is not to scale. All right. I stepped over a few steps to right here. This is going to be viewing location two. All right, and then what I did is I took an angle measurement, first I took an angle measurement to the unknown light pole. And then I took an angle measurement to the reference light pole. All right, now it's implied that there is a point in space where where I was standing, I pointed this thing directly in front of me at 90 degrees. I was looking at nothing. This represents nothing, but it's just a point in space. All right, so let's uh, let's figure out what I, what I did. The first thing I did when I moved over to position two was I measured this angle right here. This the angle from this imaginary line here over to the unknown light pole, and we're going to call that angle B. All right, that's going to be angle B, so let's, let's go fill that in. That was an angle that I took in the field, angle B. And angle B was measured initially at 126.5 degrees. Of course, I got to subtract out 90 degrees. And that gave me angle B measurement of 36.5 degrees. Okay, and then I, when I was out there in the field, I took another angle. All right, and this time I took an angle from my imaginary viewing location to the reference light pole. So we'll call this angle C. All right, just follow along. Angle C was measured at 96.5 degrees. Okay, subtract out 90. So angle C was measured at 6.5 degrees. As I mentioned, this is not to scale, but if I drew it to scale, it would go off the page. So now, we can compute the missing angles. There's some, there's some angles that are missing. For example, this angle is missing, right? That angle is missing, and we need that angle. So we're gonna, we'll find that angle. That, we're going to call that angle D, right? So here's angle D. We've got A, B, C, and then we're going to find angle D. All right, well, this is a right angle here, and I know B and C, so I, I know that this these will add up to 90. So the way I'm going to find angle D is by subtracting from 90, I'm going to say 90 degrees, minus angles B, okay, minus angle B, 
well, I guess that would be the whole angle, wouldn't it? I don't need to subtract out angle C. I can just subtract out angle B. All right, so 90 minus angle B will give me angle D. Fair enough. Okay, so uh, angle B was 36.5. So I'm going to subtract 36.5 from 90. 90 minus 36.5 degrees. Okay, and that's going to equal... 90 minus 36.5 equals 53.5. 53 53.5 degrees. Okay, that's angle D. Now there's another angle over here. We'll call this guy angle E. Okay, angle E. Now angle E, we'll find it in a similar way. Angle E is just equal to 90 degrees, because now I'm, I'm, I'm looking here at this rectangle here. Angle E is just equal to 90 degrees. And this time I'm going to subtract out angle A. Okay, so we take 90 degrees. And then angle A was equal to 29.5 minus 29.5 degrees and that gives us our angle E of 90 minus 29.5 equals 60.5 60.5 degrees okay so now we have these angles and what we're really, ladies and gentlemen, what we're really looking for, there's, there's an angle here called the parallactic angle. And that is actually this guy right here. That's the parallactic angle. We'll call that angle P for parallactic angle. Okay, so angle P, if we're going to find it, We'll use some of the angles that we already found to find angle P. So if, let's now look at the rectangle from, from this perspective. Okay, all these are 90 degree angles. So if angle E is 60.5 degrees and angle E was equal to 90 minus angle A, what, what's this up here? Okay, this is angle A. That's equal to angle A. All right, now let's go over here. I need to find one uh, additional angle. I need to find we'll actually have it so this angle B right here this this is the same angle right here that's that's angle B okay this is also angle B so angle B was 36.5 right well if that's 36.5 and that's 90, what is this equal to? Well, we said that uh, 36.5 minus 90, let's compute that. 90 minus 36.5, that's 53.5. All right, that's just equal to angle D. We already found that, so this is angle D. So, if I want to find angle P, that's just equal to 90 degrees minus angle A minus angle D. Okay, that'll give me the parallactic angle. And 
that's just equal to 90 degrees minus angle A of 29.5 minus angle D of 53.5. All right, so my, my angle of parallax, or my parallactic angle, is equal to 90 minus 29.5 minus 53.5. That's 7. So my, my parallactic angle is 7 degrees. Think about what that means. That's, that's this angle here. That's the angle formed in here. Just shade it in a little bit. Okay. That's the parallactic angle. All right. So the only distance that I know, ladies and gentlemen, is between these two eyes. So the distance that I know is the distance that I know is from from I1 I1 to I2 is equal to well let's go back and take a look at our field measurements hundred and ninety six inches or four hundred and ninety seven point eight four centimeters hundred and ninety six inches or four hundred ninety seven point eight four centimeters so that was hundred and ninety six inches inches or four hundred ninety seven point eight four centimeters Okay, we'll compute the distances in, in both systems so viewers can choose their units of measurement. That's all I know. That's this distance here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use inches for now. So this distance right here is one hundred ninety six inches. See? That distance between the two observation locations is 196 inches. This is 196 inches. All right, now what I'm going to claim is that we already have enough information to solve this problem. Okay. If I can get this height right here okay if I can get this I can solve the whole thing no I can I can get that because I know this is 196 right I have angle C right so let's let's do this let's put this up here let's bring this guy up here you can do this a couple of different ways but that's 196 196 inches this is a right angle Angle C was equal to 6.5 degrees, so using the 90 minus 6.5, 90 minus 6.5 means that this angle here is 83.5 degrees. Okay. So we can we can actually we're going to compute some some sine a sine function right now. I know that the sine of angle C is equal to 196 inches, and that you can see that a little bit easier if I turn the paper like this. Angle C, okay, which was equal to 6.5 degrees, the sine of Angle C times some scaling factor is equal to 196 inches. All right, so let's let's compute that. 
let me move over a little bit here. I'm going to draw this triangle out horizontally so it it's, looks more like a problem that we feel comfortable solving. I'm actually going to try to draw it more to scale. So this is viewing location two, right? And here's a right triangle. This guy right here is the reference light pole. This angle here, this is angle C. And that was equal to 6.5 degrees. Right, so 90 minus 6.5 gave me 83.5 up here. 83.5 right here. And this distance we measured using tape measure as 196 inches. All right, we can find this very easily. We can also find we can also find this distance. We can find this distance here. Okay? We can find those. That's what we're going to find right now. So here's what I know. I know that the sine of 6.5 degrees times something, which I don't know, a scaling factor, is equal to 196 inches. Right? That's what I know. Because the sine of 6.5 in radians is going to give me the radian measurement for sine of 6.5 degrees for a unit circle of radius 1. Right? So it's like this. The sine of 6.5 degrees for the unit circle of radius equals 1. Okay, that, that's, that would be a good way to write it for this sign here. So first we need to know what the sine of 6.5 degrees is. And for that, we're going to use our fancy calculator. We will take the sine of 6.5 degrees. Make sure it's in degrees. The way you do that is go down. Make sure you've got this sucker in degrees. All right, so take the sine of 6.5. And that's going to give you the radian measurement for a unit circle of radius 1 of 6.5 degrees. And that was... 0.113203213 So we need to rewrite this as 0 0.113203213 Okay times x equals 196 inches So now what? Well, I'm going to divide out my sine of 6.5 degrees in radians for unit circle radius 1. I'm going to divide that out of both sides, and I'll find my scaling factor, which, as we'll see, is equal to the hypotenuse of the triangle. But we, we let's say we don't know that. We can find it using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I'm going to divide that out of both sides. Let me do that on the calculator here. See if you can get it all in frame. So, I'm going to take 196 divided by that radian measurement and get 1,731.399 and whatever, 608. You see that? That's going to be my x value. That's my scaling factor. 1,731.399608 inches. So I'm going to write x equals 
1731. Point three nine nine six zero eight inches. Okay, that's my scaling factor. I'm going to call this the scaling factor because I'm scaling up from a unit circle of radius one to a unit circle of radius something. Right? If we if we take a look at what we're doing here. Just I keep talking about radius measurements. It might be useful to show you what I mean. So a unit circle of radius 1. I've done this in, in more depth than other problems. But this is my radius. Okay, this is, so I'm making a radius here. So in unit circle of radius 1, we knew that that was 1. So we had to scale up. We're scaling up to the, the, the circle that's the size of the, the distance from me to the light pole. So we're scaling up. And the scale factor from is uh, 1,731 times as big as the unit circle. Of In this case, we're, we're talking about inches. So 1 inch the sine of 6.5 degrees for a radius of 1 inch is 0 0.113203213 inches. So the sine of radius 1731.399608 inches, right, that's this hypotenuse here, is 196 inches for 6.5 degrees. The sine of 6.5 degrees for a circle of radius 1,731.399608 inches is 196 inches. All right, let's prove that. Okay. So I know that that's the sign. Okay. So if I know that the scaling factor is 1,731.399608, I can compute the sign of 83.5, which will give me this. All right. I could also compute the cosine of 6.5. Do you see how the cosine of 6.5 is exactly the same as the sine of 83.5? I like working with sine because I know the Taylor series approximation for sine, and I could compute it algebraically without a calculator if I had to. So I always want to act like I'm an ancient Sumerian or I'm stranded on a desert island or... I just don't have a lot of information available. Maybe I don't have this $150 calculator sitting here. So I'm going to use the sine of 83.5. So the sine of 83.5, okay, that's the same thing as cosine of 6.5, okay. Either of those for unit circle of radius 1 times my scaling factor, right, which we know is going to give me that distance that I want to know. Okay, so we know this guy is, this is, this is him right here. So first we got to find the sine of 83.5 or the cosine of 6.5, whatever your fancy is. I'm going to do the sine of 83.5 and I'll show you that they're both equal sine of 83.5 okay is equal to that radian measurement for unit circle of radius 1 the cosine of 6.5 is identical All right so it doesn't matter which one I take but it's for a unit circle of radius 1 inch the sine of 83.5 degrees or cosine of 6.5 degrees is 0.99 3571855 inches. All right, so let me write that down. Okay, this equals 0.9935718557. Now we know our scaling factor. Okay, that's the 1731.399608 inches. 
1731.399608. Right, that's going to equal something. And it's going to equal the, this is going to be equal to, I should say, the sine of 83.5 degrees or cosine of 6.5 degrees for a circle of radius 1731.399608 inches. Okay, that's equal to, and then I'm just going to do this multiplication here. Oops. I, I'm going to do this multiplication. So I'm going to multiply that times the scaling factor. And I'm going to get 1720.269921. So that's 1720.269921 inches. All right, so now we know that this equals 1720. And we'll round up just to the nearest. Uh, so let's call this 27 inches. 1720.27 inches. And I'll now prove that this scaling factor is the hypotenuse of the triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, up here we'll call this a on 196, we'll call this B and we'll call this C. So let's prove it. A squared would be 196 squared plus B squared, which is what we just computed, 1720.27 squared equals C squared. Okay. And let's compute it. 190, oops, 196 squared is 38,416. And then uh, 1720 squared, 1720.27 squared is 2,959,000. Right, so we're going to say that that plus that equals c squared. So if I take the square root of if I take the square root of this computed value a squared plus b squared, I should get c, which should be 1731.39 or something like that. Okay, so here we go. And there it is, 1731.399686. Okay, remember I rounded up to 27, otherwise it would be exact. So this checks out. This checks out using the Pythagorean theorem, just to double check. So now we know C is equal to 1731.399686. Inches. All right. So now we know this value. We were looking for that height. That height is equal to 1720.27 inches. That's that height. I'm just translating this back to the original diagram. We also know this distance here. We don't need to know that distance, but it's something that we know. Okay, but since we know this distance here, we're we're one step away from computing the. We're one step away from computing how far we are from this light pole here. Okay, now this distance from this imaginary point to my second viewing location is equal to the distance from the reference light pole 
to my first viewing location. You see it's the same distance. That was the trick that we were exploiting. So let me um, let me make some note of that here. So the distance from viewing location one to uh, the reference light pole. We call this the reference light pole. We now have that distance. Okay, so that distance is 1720 point and I want to be exact here so I'm going to revert back to our longer expression 1720.269921 1720.269921 inches that's that distance that is this distance here from the reference light pole to my first viewing location. If I show you the original image here, that we now know the distance from the first sighting location to the reference light pole. That's 1720.269921 inches. 1720.269921. Okay, it's, so it's 143 feet away is what it's saying. All right, so let me get rid of this again. Keep thinking about what we're doing here. All right, so now I know angle A, right? Angle A was equal to 29.5 degrees, right? I want to know this distance from the unknown light pole to viewing location one. Well, I could look at it as the hypotenuse of this triangle here. Right? I could view that as the hypotenuse of this triangle here. And I know this distance. I know this. Okay, so I'm good to go. I know these angles. Okay, I know that if Angle A is 29.5. I know that this whole angle here is just equal to 90 minus angle A. All right, so let's translate this triangle here over to make it kind of look like this one. This will be our, our second triangle computation. So here I'm going to construct another triangle. And I'll label it so you can fast back and forth. Okay. So let's, that's the triangle I'm computing. Let's label it this way. So this point right here, this is viewing location one. So this is viewing location one. This guy right here, this is my reference light pole. Okay. So there's my unknown light pole right there. If I zoom back to this, my unknown light pole, reference light pole, viewing location one. I've just turned it on its side to make a little bit more visually clear what we're doing. So this is the unknown light pole. All right, now remember, we want what we're yearning for here, endeavoring to find through this whole problem, is that distance right there. I want to know what that distance is. Well, how am I going to find that? Well, I do. I already found this distance. Okay, that's what we found here. 
that's this distance right here. Remember, that's this height. That's from my first viewing location to the reference light pole. We computed a 1720.269921 inches. So there I've made the little distance measurement. Reference location or sighting location one to the reference light pole. Sighting location one to the reference light pole. We know this is, uh, or at least we computed it to be 1720.269921 inches. We also know this angle. Okay, this is a right angle. That's important. We know this is angle A. Okay, again, scoot back here. This is angle A. And angle A was equal to 29.5 degrees. All right? So angle A, this is equal to 29.5 degrees. Well, if this is 90 and that's 29.5, then we know what that is. That's 180 minus 90 minus 29.5 gives us 60.5. So this is 60.5 degrees. Fair enough. So, what do we know? Again, you could say we know that the cosine of 29.5 for you, uh, degrees for unit circle of radius 1 multiplied by some scaling factor will be equal to this. But I could also say if I want to use sine, if I want to use sine, I can say the sine of 60.5 degrees times a scale uh, for a unit circle of radius 1 times a scaling factor will be equal to 1720.269921 inches and because I'm I'm trying to be consistent about this whole Taylor series approximation and being a primitive Egyptian or Greek or Sumerian then I'm just going to do sine so we could say here the sine of 60.5 degrees or I'll write it in just for those of you who are at, at home playing along the cosine of 29.5 degrees okay for a unit circle of radius 1 I think it's I think they should teach you all to write that in there okay that whatever that is in radians times a scaling factor that we don't know okay we're gonna make a presumption that it's equal to the hypotenuse but we don't know we're gonna say that the cosine of 29.5 times a scaling factor or the sine of 60.5 times a scaling factor will be equal to uh, 1720 point two six nine nine to one inches okay that's what we're claiming so let's go back to our calculator and first I just want to show you that sine of 60.5 that's uh, 0 0.870355659 is exactly the same as the cosine of 29.5 okay it's the same just just so we get that clear I'm not pulling the wool over your eyes but that's for a unit circle of radius one inch okay so if the if the circle has a radius of one inch then the height or the sine the, the sine or co, the sine of 60.5 degrees on that circle or the cosine of 29.5 degrees on that circle will be equal to 0.870355659 inches so that's going to be 0 0.870355659, okay, times x equals 
9921. Okay, so now to get the scaling factor by itself, I need to divide out of both sides of the equation the sine of 60.5 or cosine of 29.5 degrees for unit circle radius 1, which came out to that 0.870355659 number. I'm just going to divide that out of both sides to get x by itself. I think it's important to write this out because that way if you make a mistake somewhere, you and or your teacher or friend or whoever uh, could take a look at your work and say, aha, you, you did this wrong or you transposed incorrectly here. Makes it easier. It's also helpful. You can go back and review your work in the future to see how you actually accomplish this if you forget how you did it. So now we're going to find the scaling factor, right? We're just going to do this division problem right here. So let's go back. Okay. So I'm going to take 1720.269921. Uh, divide it by, and then I'm going to put in that uh, sine of 60.5 for unit circle radius 1 or cosine of 29.5 for unit circle radius 1, that uh, 0.870355659 and divide it out and I get a scaling factor of 1,976.513659. So that equaled uh, 1,976.513659. Okay, now I'm calling that the scaling factor I don't want to get too excited yet because I believe that's our unknown distance. But we're going to call it the scaling factor for now because what we're doing is we're scaling up from a unit circle of radius 1 to a unit circle of radius 1,976. So we went from 1 inch unit circle to 1,976 inches. We scaled up. So that's why our sine and cosine values jumped. And that's why I'm calling this the scaling factor. Because we're, 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 we're started with a little circle and we're scaling up to a big circle. All right. So now, just to make things complete, let's find this height right here. Okay. And then we'll compute the Pythagorean theorem to verify that the hypotenuse is in fact equal to my scaling factor okay so I'm going to do now that I know what these values equal I can find the sine of 29.5 so now I'm going to say the sine of 29.5 degrees for a unit circle of radius 1 multiplied by the scaling factor of 1,976.513659 will equal uh, that height that we're looking for, right? That will equal this guy right here. The distance from the unknown light pole to the reference light pole. Just we're, the distance from the unknown light pole to the reference light pole is what we're going to calculate right now. So, what is it? Well, what is the sine of 29.5 for unit circle radius 1? Well, I have no idea. Sine of 29.5 for unit circle radius 1 is equal to 0 0.49242356601. So, just write that in. 0 0.4924 two three five six zero one and if the radius was one inch that would be 0 0.49242356601 inches times the scaling factor of 1976.513659 right and that's going to equal what we'll look the height the distance from the reference pole to the unknown pole. All right, so let's multiply that out. 
and I can just take that value, multiply it by that value, and that gives me 973.2818926 inches. Right? That's the that equals 973.2818926 inches. Okay, so now let's verify that we already know this distance is a scaling factor. Let's verify that before we start to celebrate. So remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, if we call this, let's so go ahead and write this value in. This was 973. 0.29 inches. So if we say a, and that we're going to call that, sorry, we're going to call that a, we'll call this b, and we'll call this c. Okay, so a squared is 9, that's 973.2918926 squared plus b squared, which was uh, 1720.269921, that's 1720.26, uh, squared equals c squared. All right, so let's, let's just do that math real quick. We'll take that term squared, okay, a squared, gives us that enormous number there. Okay, and then b squared is uh, 1720.269921 squared. So if I add those two squares together, I get c squared. And if I take the square root of c squared, I should get this scaling factor 1,976.513659. So we'll take the square root of that number, and we do. We get 1,976.513659. So that checks out. Okay. In other words, the Pythagorean theorem works, and c is in fact equal to the scaling factor of 1,976. And we'll round up now 0.51 inches. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our original graph. And we found this distance. This distance was 973.29. And we found this distance right here that distance right there and that was equal to 1976.51 inches Okay, now uh, 1,976.51 inches. 1,976.51 inches in centimeters. That's uh, 5,020.3354 centimeters. So we'll, we'll bring this down here. We'll say that uh, the distance from viewing location 1 to uh, the unknown light pole uh, is equal to 1,976.51 inches, okay, or 5,020.3354. 
5020.3354 centimeters. 5020.3354 centimeters. All right, now, this value cannot be given without a margin of error because I was using a handmade instrument and I, I did a simpler problem yesterday and I came out with a margin of error of 9.4 percent which is I think I, I made some improvements on that I don't think that the margin of error would really be 9.4 percent but we'll, we'll compute the margin of error at 9.4 percent so we'll say uh, plus or minus that this is equal to uh, these measurements uh, plus or minus and then we'll take 9.4 percent of these values so uh, we'll say 0 0.094 times 1976.51 okay so plus or minus 185 0.79 inches or plus or minus on the uh, centimeters that'll be a 5020.3354 times 9.4 percent or 0 0.094 plus or minus 471.91 uh, centimeters Okay. And that would be a, a margin of error. That would say the margin of error out of an abundance of caution, the margin of error uh, is equal to 9.4%. Now, I actually can't go out. I suppose I could go out and, and measure it somehow. The distance from, let's go back to our original image. This is I want to put this guy up here. Yeah. So now I know how far I am away from that pole. I am uh one thousand nine hundred seventy six point five one inches plus or minus 185.79 inches. So, and, or I'm 5,020 centimeters away, plus or minus 471 centimeters. That's how far I am away from that pole. It's just amazing that we can compute that. So, um, my distance to the pole is given right here. That's pretty cool. Now, uh, I'm used to, to listening to seeing a number in feet, so that would be 1976.51 inches. Okay, if I divide out, there's 12 inches in a foot, so that would be equal to uh, about 164 feet. Okay, so about 164 or 164.7, so about 165 feet away. That's how far I am away from that pole. And I just think that that is so cool that we are able to calculate the distance to something. All we didn't, we weren't ever, we never measured it off. You know, we never did pace out the distance. We were just using the parallax. And so there is the, didn't quite get it all the entire equation in view or the entire all the work that we did in view and and there it is see if you can like lock this out a little bit you can see it okay. there's the whole equation and this was the computation for this is called, by the way, the way we refer to this is trigonometric parallax. So that's
trigonometric parallax. Right, that's what we that's what we computed here and our answer is right here it's really cool that we uh, that we were able to find this distance here that's what we found there it is right there and it's really cool that we're able to find that using very simple mathematics, nothing that was impossible to understand. And um, we'll flash back and just show you what we went through. We started by wanting to know how far away that pole was. Now, I have no way of knowing. Uh, by, I can't pace it off. It's too far away. I don't have a long enough tape measure. You know, I don't feel like walking or whatever, right? And then I modeled our, our parallax by pacing to the right 196 inches, okay? Then I had that reference pole that I was, I was standing in front of before. Uh, so really, if you're ever doing one of these problems in the field yourself, let me get rid of this guy for a second. You need to have a reference pole. Right? You've got to have a second point that you that you are 90 degrees to or you're standing directly in front of. So you can use your tool. Okay, so you can use your, your tool here. If you're looking in the bottom of the screen, you can use this tool to, uh, to cite angles. you got to start with something that you're standing directly in front of that you can cite angles on. So then we set up our, our parallax diagram, right? And I can simplify that diagram to just that, right? Then we put it down on paper, and we came up with this, right? Um, I'll just zoom in on the diagram that we created one more time and then zoom back out. So the central diagram was right here, and we knew only the distance from the first to the second viewing location, and we took those angle measurements, and we found those out, and then we computed a couple of triangles to find uh, exploiting the fact that these these angles were right angles so we could do sine and cosine uh, val values that's how we that's how we got to where where we got to that's how we got the answer now the best thing to do is to make one of these parallax instruments and try it for yourself there's there's no better teacher than experience and there's no reason why given the simple tool here Ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no reason why you can't put this thing together, right? You, you really don't need anything but a level and a, uh, a, a protractor and a straw and some Velcro, Velcro tape or glue. I don't think your total investment would be more than $5. That's less than the cost, uh, cost of a venti uh, frappuccino at Starbucks. Okay, so uh, please uh, watch the other trigonometry videos and keep keep practicing this. I mean, I I did not know how to do this yesterday, but I, I worked on it and did a few problems and and came up with it. Um, my method is a little bit unusual. Uh, I realize that there are probably people smashing their faces against the table right now because you probably could have done this using a single step with your calculator. Maybe not. I don't know. I've seen other videos where they compute the parallax, and I come away from the video not having a single clue how they did it. 
they use tangent somehow, something or other tangent, and they come up with the number. But I don't know that, I and mean, I can't prove that they're right. With this, the way I did it just now, every single step is shown. Okay, so I absolutely know that this is the correct computation. Now, there, there's certainly value in speed. And if somebody told me, hey, all you really needed to do was take some of this value over tangent of some, the parallactic angle or whatever, and that would have saved you uh, 30 minutes, or as it turns out, an hour and nine minutes. That's where we are right now. Uh, I would say, um, great. However, I can't visualize that in my head, but I can, I just, I was able to visualize this. This diagram that we drew right here is just the diagram of what we saw out in the field laid down flat, like we're looking at it from a satellite, okay, or an airplane looking down on it. That's exactly what it is. Uh, so now you know how to find the distance to an unknown, ob an unknown distance using nothing but a reference location and moving to the left or right a certain distance that you can measure. Uh, we use uh, the trigonometric parallax. It's fun to say. So go tell your friends, tell your parents, uh, post it on Facebook, on Twitter, Insta it, Snap it. Uh, get, on, uh, get on your email, send a, send a message to CNN, call TI, tell them that you did something cool. Uh, go around town disturbing the peace, uh, not exactly disturbing the peace, but people will give you strange looks as you walk around. Uh, I certainly got strange looks as a grown man walking around looking through a straw. But, uh, guys, it's it's part of the life of being a nerd is that uh, you you got to let that roll off your back. Just go out and take some, take some sightings, have fun, and compute the trigonometric parallax. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I went outside and I actually went out into the field and paced off the distance between the two poles because that was easier than marching off from my viewing location to the uh, to the unknown pole. Doesn't matter, we can compute it easily. So I, I measured the distance from the unknown pole to the reference pole. Right, the actual distance, and that, that distance came out to, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. That distance came out to, we're going to see how accurate we were with our parallax measurement. Let me zoom in on this. Okay. So I went out here and I computed the distance from the unknown pole to the reference pole. And just so we get an, a, a, a visual for what what I was computing. I, I paced off the distance from the unknown pole to the reference pole and that distance was 79 feet. Okay, so that was 79 feet. Let's go down here and we will we'll, we'll write in this little area here. So my, my actual distance from the unknown pole from the unknown pole to the reference pole. The actual distance here from the unknown pole to the reference pole was 79 feet. Which, if, if we make that inches, is 79 times 12. 948 inches. Okay, 948 inches. So this was the actual distance. We'll call this the actual distance. Actual. All right, so how close were we to being right? Well, um, we'll and we'll compute all the We'll, we'll compute the this, this this line here. We our our calculated distance between the poles was 973.29. So, say our computed distance was 
inches. And this was computed. We'll say computed. So our, our, our difference here is just a subtraction. We can take 948 actual minus 973.29 computed gives us a, an error. So we were off by 25.29 inches. We were off by 25.29 inches. Sorry, 25.29 inches. We'll call this the error, inches error. Okay, and, and that is equal to, if we want to find out the margin of error there, we take the actual measurement of 948, okay, minus the computed measurement of 973.29, and we divide by the computed measurement of 973.29 to find the margin of error. Right, so that's that's right there. So I'll just do that really quickly on this calculator, so you can see. Uh, I took 948 minus 973.29. Okay, and I got that inches difference, and then I'm going to divide that by 973.29 to get my my margin of error and that's uh, if we multiply this decimal times 100 we'll get it in percent 2.59 percent so I, I was way within my other margin of error this is 2.59 percent will will round up and say we were off by 2.6% error. This is our margin of error. All right. So if we were off by 2.6% there, we should be able to recompute this little triangle right here and find out what our our actual distance is. So if we just have to observe that this distance from the unknown pole to the reference pole is the same as from this imaginary point to my first viewing location, right? We said this was 973.29. So in this case, Let's put in the actual value. We'll compute a, another triangle and we'll find the actual hypotenuse there for this triangle form from the unknown distance to this imaginary point here. Okay? That's the same triangle as replacing this computed distance with the actual value and recomputing this triangle. It doesn't really matter. All we're going to do is recompute this triangle with the actual distance uh, put in there of 948 instead of 973.29. So let's go down here this part of the page and we'll just redraw that triangle. And I'll label it for you. Oops. That's a right angle. This point is my unknown pole. And this point right here is my reference pole. Okay, and here's my, my initial viewing location over here. This is eyeball one.
Okay, so here's here's the the value that we learned. We learned that this I went and measured this was 948 inches in reality. So this is actual. So now we we'd like to know again. We'd like to know what that is. Okay, so we know this angle. And uh, this angle was 29.5 degrees. Okay, well, maybe it really wasn't 29.5 degrees because we were off, right? So if we're computing this distance, we know we were off by 2.6%. And it turns out we were short. Uh, we, we computed our, our actual measurement was shorter than the computed measurement. So our distance right here will be short okay, by 2.6%. Okay, so if I wanted to compute this triangle out, I could subtract 2.6% from this number here. Let's do that. So 1720.27. Let's go back down here. I want you to see this. If I take 1720.27 and I subtract out 2.6% uh, of 1720. Point two seven. I'll have the the correct measurement. Okay, so that would be seventeen twenty point two seven times point zero two six. And I'll subtract that from seventeen twenty point two seven. That gives me a corrected measurement of 1,675.54 inches actual. So this distance now is 948, or pardon me, uh, 1,675.54 inches. And we can compute using the Pythagorean theorem, we can compute the hypotenuse. Okay, so we'll just take, uh, we'll call this equals A, and we'll say this equals B, and we'll say this equals C. We, we could also use the arc sign to find this, uh, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse, but we don't know the hypotenuse. Okay, so we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So that would just be equal to, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, so that would be uh, 1,675.54 squared plus 948 squared equals c squared. So we'll use our calculator here to help us speed things along. 1675.54 squared 
is that an enormous number? 948 squared is that enormous number. Now we add those numbers together. And we get another enormous number. If we take the square root of that number, we'll have C, or the hypotenuse. Square root of that number it gives us 1925.13. So C equals 1925.13 inches is equal to C. So that's C actual. We'll call this C actual. So our computed distance was 1,976.51 inches. This was our computed distance, but our actual distance was 1,925.13. So we could say that our, uh, our computed distance from viewing location 1 our computed distance from viewing location 1 to the unknown pole was so this was computed equals uh, 1,976.51, 976.51 inches. This was computed. And our actual measurement was 1925.13, 1925.13. So we were, our, our error there is just a subtraction problem. That's 1,976.51 minus 1,925.13 means we were off by 51.38 inches. So we were off by 51. is actual 51.38 inches this was our error okay and the margin of error again is 2.6 percent so we'll take uh, our actual measurement of 1925 0.13 and subtract out 1976.51 over 1976.51 and uh, our margin of error should come out to we'll use this calculator I'll take my actual measurement minus the uh, one that we computed 1976.51 and then I'll I'll get that and then I'll divide by the computed measurement of 1976.51 and I see that uh, if we multiply that answer times 100 that it rounds up again to, sorry, 2.6 percent. See, we were we were off by 2.6 percent. Given the crude nature of the instrument that we were using, okay, that we put together with Velcro and straws and protractors, I would say that being off by 2.6 percent, or 51 inches, is pretty remarkable. So 51 inches, 51.38 inches is equal to uh, 4 feet. So we were off by uh, 4.28 feet. 
on a distance of so the actual distance from my first viewing location to the unknown pole was 1925.13 divided by 12. My actual distance was 160.43 feet. Okay, so we were we were off by just four feet, or 2.6 percent. Now it's just amazing that we were able to get that close to the correct answer by four feet um, using the parallax method. So it just shows that this is a very powerful tool, and just so we can go back to see our original problem, how far away is this pole? That pole is 160.43 feet away from that viewing location, or in inches, it's 1,925.13 inches. In centimeters, that is equal to 1925.13. Uh, 4,889.83 centimeters uh, or 4,889.83 centimeters making our error on that we were off by 10.87 centimeters Pretty remarkable that, that that's how close we came. 10 centimeters off the actual distance to that pole. Pretty darn remarkable. Let me just zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Uh, and we'll write the actual distance in in red. We'll put it in here as... 1925.13 right this is the actual measurement inches and let me zoom out now so you can see the whole thing there is your if you've been doing this along with me, it's 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 incredible that we could come that close. So thank thanks again for watching. Um, please keep working. Good luck.